Hello! A pleasant morning to everyone. I am Robbie Kayubit and today we will discuss about the customs of the Tagalog or the last costumbres de los Indios Tagalos de Filipinas. So first, let us know who is the author of the book. He was Juan de Placencia. His real name is Joan de Portocarrero, one of the seven children of Pedro de Portocarrero, who was the captain of the Spanish schooner o kap kapitan ng sasakyang pandagat ng mga Espanyol noon. So, Placencia was born in the early 16th century in Placencia, the region of Extre Extremadura, Spain. He, was, he grew up in the period of known as the Siglo de Oro or the Golden Age where it was the period in flourishing in arts and literature in Spain. So, Placencia was a member of Franciscan Order in 1578 and one of the first missionaries who arrived in the Philippines. He was believed to arrive on July 2, 1578 at the port in Cavite. So, Placencia was assigned to do missionary work in southern Tagalog areas or in the Laguna area. So, it means he was the one who is assigned to convert the native people in the southern Tagalog area into Christianity. Kasi yun naman talaga ang rason kung bakit tayo sinakop ng mga Espanyol. And basically, their superior also tasked them to observe or provide report on what is the status of the town that they were assigned to, the culture, the traditions, and the customs of the people, and etc. So, Placencia was also the writer of the book Doctrina Christiana, the first printed book in the Philippines. And Placencia was died in Liliu Laguna in 1590. So he spent his missionary and missionary life here in the Philippines. And his original copy of the custom of the Tagalog is currently kept in Archivo General de Indias, located in Seville, Spain. And a duplicate copy is kept in Franciscano Ibero Oriental in Madrid, Spain. At saka mayroon din itong English translation appeared in Volume 7 of the Blair and Robertson titled The Philippine Islands. So now we will discuss the important information in the customs of the Tagalog. So first is the social classes that was organized in the barangay and had their hierarchical class system. Second, the political and social practices. And last is the worship and the supernatural beliefs of the Tagalog. So the tribal gathering was called Barangay in Tagalog, which the dato or the chief is rolls over. So before the, the Spaniard colony came, the barangay was already existed. And until now, we called a specific place a barangay here in the Philippines. So let us know the social classes that we had before in the Philippines. So usually, napag-aaralan natin ang pagkakaroon ng iba't ibang social classes sa Pilipinas. At ang pinakamataas noon ay yung dato. The dato or the chief is the leaders of, the, of their barangay. So they are the ones who governs and captains in wars. So also, they are the decision makers of, the, of their community. So, sila ang nagdi-decide kung ano ang dapat mangyayari sa barangay or kung ano ang dapat gagawin. So, the dato are the one who decide the conflicts and problems of what people and their community are up to. 
and the datus also known as the smart, brave, and great leader of the barangay before. And the second social class is the Maharlika. They were the freeborn or the free people who doesn't pay tax or tribute in their community. So their only responsibility is to accompany the dato and his day-to-day -day activities. And then the Maharlika is also trained as a fighter. Sila yung mga warriors na inaasahan ng kanilang barangay o community na lalaban para sa kanila. So, it might be during the times of wars or they have a conflict with other communities. And the third is the aliping namamahay or the commoners. Basically, they are the common people that live in their own houses. They are not, they can not be sold or they cannot be treated as the lowest average of in their community. So, they are the average people na nagtatrabaho sa kanilang sa isang household as a helper ng isang maharlika o ng dato. The difference of the aliping na mamahay to the other aliping is that they can still get married and have their own property and possible possible to have a good life but of course their source of income is to serve the hi higher class and lastly is the lowest class of the social class the aliping sagigilir they serve their master in his house and they can be also sold if the master want to and aliping sa gigiler ay sila yung mga gumagawa ng mababang uri ng trabaho sa kanilang community and pwede din silang ipadala kung saan saan or ipambayad ng utang ng kanilang amo in short, hindi nila hawak ang kanilang buhay ang kanilang sariling buhay nakadepende ito sa kanilang pinagsisilbihan. But what if magkaroon ng intermarriage between Maharlika at mga Alipin? What if the Maharlika wants to move from one barangay to another barangay? And what are the political and social practices before? So marami tayong katanungan. So there is five situation on that explain how are the practices before? So, situation one. Those who are Maharlika on both father's and the mother's side will continue to be forever Maharlika. But if it happens that they will become slave, it is through marriage. So, hindi lang pala ito nangyayari sa mga soft opera. Dahil nangyayari na din pala ito noon sa ating mga sinaunang Pilipino. So, situation 2. If the Maharlika had children among their slaves, their children and their mother became free. So, if ever na magkaroon ang Maharlika ng mga anak sa kanyang mga taga-silbi, may karapatan siyang na hintuluton na maging malaya ang kanyang mga ang kanyang mga anak at ang tagapagsilpin nito. So, situation 3. If Maharlika had children with a slave woman of another, the slave woman was compelled when pregnant to give her master a half of a gold tiles. In this case, the half of a child is, was free if the father recognized him. But if not, the child will become a whole slave. For example, si A ay alipin ni X at si X ay may kaibigan na si Y na isang din maharlika at si A ay nabuntis ni Y kaya kailangan ni A magbigay ng, ng half of a gold tiles kay X it's like bilang kabayaran ng kanyang pagkakasala. 
if ever na panagutan ni Y si A, ang kanilang anak ay magiging half-free. Pero, na, pero kung hindi naman, ang kanilang anak ay magiging whole slave. So, situation 4. If a free woman had children by a slave, they are all free, provided he were not her husband. So, in this case, if ever na magkaroon ng anak ang isang babaeng maharlika sa isang alipin, ang kanyang mga anak ay magiging free. Pero, sa isang kondisyon na hindi niya ipapa alam na slave ang ama ng mga anak niya. Yeah. Situation 5 If the two persons married of whom one was the maharnika and the other is a slave or a living na mamahay or a living sa gikilir, their children will, will be divided. The at birth order, the first, the third, and the fifth belongs to the father. So, these children ay magiging maharlika. The even birth order, the second, the fourth, and the sixth belongs to the mother. So, sila ay magiging alivin. So, if only child, child is half free and half slave. But what if the maharlika could not after marriage and wants to move from one barangay to another barangay. So, of course, they should pay a certain fine in gold as arranged among them. So, failure to pay the fine might result a war between the barangay that he left and the barangay which he entered. Special Cases when one married of another barangay or another village, the children were afterwards divided equally between the two barangays. So, this is means na kapag magkaasawa ang isang tao sa kabilang barangay, ang kanilang mga anak ay paghahatian between the two barangays. So, the investigation made by the dato and sentence passed by the dato must take place and the presence of his barangay. So, ito ay pag-uusapan ng dato ng magkabilang barangay. So, they had also laws na which they condemned to death a man of low birth who insulted the daughter of or wife of the chief. Likewise, witches and others of the same, same class. So, if ever someone in the low classes will insult the daughter or wife of the chief, ang, kampa, ang kapalit nito ay kamatayan ng kanyang buhay. Dowries are given by men to the woman's parents before marriage. If the parents are both alive, they both enjoy the use of it. Noon, mga sinaunang Pilipino, ang pagpapakas, ah, bago magpakasal ay kailangan munang magbigay ng dowries o isang bigay kaya sa pamilya ng kanyang pakakasalan. In the case of divorce, before the birth of the children, if the wife left his husband or oh, her husband for the purpose of marrying another all the dowry a equal additional amount fell to the husband so walang makukuha ang kanyang asawa sa mga ari-arian nila so if the wife left and did not marry another the dowry was returned when the husband left his wife he lost half of the dowry and the other half was returned to him. So, pag ang lalaki naman ang mag-divorce sa babae, ang kalahati ng dowry ay 
mapupunta sa kanya at ang kalahati ay mapupunta sa babae. But if he possesses the children at the time of the divorce, the whole dowry and the fine went to the children and was held for them by their grandparents or other responsible relatives. So, if upon the death of the parents, the son or the, do the daughter should be un unwilling to marry because it had been arranged by his or her parents. In this case, the dowry is which the parents received was returned and nothing more. But if the parents were still living, they paid the fine. Worship of the Tagalog The indigenous religious belief of the Tagalog people sometimes referred to as antism, or less accurately using the general term animism, were well documented by Spanish missionaries mostly in the form of epistolary accounts and as entries in the various dictionaries put together by missionaries. It is true that they have the simbahan, which means a temple of adoration, but it is because when they wish to celebrate a festival, which they called pandot or worship, they celebrated it in a large house of the chef. The house for the mention the period of time was called the temple. There was no, there was one called Batala, who they specially worship. The title means that it is all powerful, or maker of all things. They also worship the moon, especially when it was new, at which time they had great rejoicing, adoring it and bidding the walk up, bidding it welcome. The change of seasons, which they called Mapolon. Mapolon, the anito of harvest and sown fields. The Balatic, which is our greater bear. They possess many idols called Licha, which were images with different shape. Diana Masalanta, who was the patron of lovers and of the generation. Makapati and Dayanali were patron of the cultivated lands and husbandari. They paid reverence to water lizard called Buaya for fear of being harmed of them. They were very li li liable to find ovaries in things they witnessed. The native had no established division of years, months, and days. The winter and summer are distinguished as sun time and water time and the latter term designing winter in those regions where there is no cold snow or ice. Their manner of offering sacrifice was to proclaim a feast and offer the devil what they had to eat. This was done in front of the eye of an idol and praises in a poetic song sung by the officiating priest, male or female, called Catalunan. Worshipping the devil without the sight of him. The devil was sometimes liable to enter into the body of Catalunan. The object of sacrifice were goat, fowls, and swine, which were fly and decapitated and laid bare before the idol. They performed another ceremony by cooking rice in a jar, after which they broke the jar and the rice was left intact. Mass which was set before the idol together with a few boyos which in a small fruit wrapped in a leaf with some lime. The heads of the animals after being offered as the as they expressed were cooked and eaten also. The reasons for offering this sacrifice was recovery of the sick person, the prosperous voyage of those embarking on the sea. A good harvest, a propitious result of wars, a successful delivery of childbirth, a happy outcome in married life. 
Valencia's classification of witches or devil were as follow. First, Catalunan. A Catalunan is mainly defined as, as a priest or priestess of the old Tagalog animistic religion. These priestesses were either female or male, transvestites. The term apparently spring from Tagalog word Catalo, which means in good terms, with such that Catalonan are those in good terms with the Anito spirits. Catalonan, also known as Babaylan, were shamans of various ethnic groups of pre-colonial Philippine island these shamans specialize in communicating, appraising, or harnessing the spirits of the dead and the spirits of nature. Second is Mangagaway. Mangagaway is a witch. She was the first agent of Satan and was primarily blamed as a cause of diseases sometimes. She would change herself into human form, appearing as a false healer. If she wished to kill someone, she employed a magic wand. And the third was Manyi Salat. The third day called Manyi Salat, which is the same as Mangagaway, this priest had the power of applying such redemies to lovers that they would abandon and despise their own wives, and in fact could prevent from having intercourse curse of the latter was Manco Kulam, whose duty is to endure fire from himself at night, once or oftener each month. This fire could not be extinguished nor it could be thus emitted ex except as a priest wallow in endure and felt which falls from the houses. And he who lived in the house where the priest was wallowing in order to emit this fire from himself, feel ill and die. This office was general. We believe now that Manco Kulam may have been another male violent, the only male agent of Satan. He was to emit fire at night, and when there was a bad weather, like this fellow agent, he could change his form. To the, so that of a healer and then induce fire at his victim houses. If the fire were extinguished immediately, the victim would eventually die. His name remains today as a witch. A witch Manco Kulam is a person employing using Kulam, a form of folk magic practiced in the Philippines. It puts emphasis in the innate power of the self and a secret knowledge of mag magica baha or low magic. Earth, fire, herbs, spices, candles, oils, and kitchenwares and utensils are often used for rituals, charms, spells, and potions. Fifth was Hokloban, which is another kind of witch of greater efficacy than Mangagaway. Without the use of medicine and simply saluting or raising the hand, they killed whom they chose. But if they desired to heal those whom they had made ill by their charms, they did so using their charms. Moreover, if they wished to destroy the house of some Indian hostel to them, they were able to do without instrument. This was an Catanduanes. This was in Catanduanes, an island of upper part of Luzon. We think that Hukluban may have been considered the last agent of Satan, and could change herself into any form she desired. She could kill someone by simply raising her hand and could heal without any difficulty as she wished, her name literally means crone or hag. Today, the Hukluban is also considered a witch who could kill someone by simply pointing a finger at him and without using any potion. It could destroy a house by merely saying so. 
The Hukluban upper is a very old crook woman. Silagan. Whose office it was? If they saw anyone close in white to tear out his liver and eat it, thus causing his death. Like this, like the preceding was the island of Catanduanes. Let no one, moreover, consider this is a fable because in Kaavan they tore out in this way through the annos all in distance of a Spanish notary who was buried in Calilaya by Father Fray Juan de Merida. Today, Silagan are considered witches in Catanduanes who preys on anyone who is dressed in white. They tear the liver and eat it afterwards. Next is Manananggal. His purpose was to show himself at night. Too many persons without his head or in trials. In such wise, the devil walked about to carry or pretended to carry his head to different places. And in the morning, returned to his body, remaining as before, alive. This seems to me to be a fable, although the native affirm that they have seen it because the devil probably caused them to so to believe. According to the folklore of, the re of that region, it is a detached female head capable of flying about its own. As, as it flies, the stomachs and entrails dangle below it, and these organs twinkle like fireflies as the pinang pinangalan moves through the, right, the night. It preys on pregnant women and an elongated proboscis like tongue. Next is Aswang which is equivalent to sorcerer, they say that they have seen him fly, and that he murdered men and ate their flesh. This was among the Visayas island. Among the Tagalogs, this did not exist. In the Visayas, there are many classes of aswang. Some think this was an invention of Spanish, but I don't say this because it is not an unusual being to exist. In the minds of societies involving from animist belief and from the same migration as the people of the Philippines, <clears throat> the Indonesian layak are said to hunt graveyards, feed on corpses, and power to change themselves into animals such as pigs and fly. In normal layak form, they are said to have unusually long tongue and large fags. In daylight, they appear as an ordinary human, but at night, their head and entrails break close from their body and fly. Most of the belief in these beings stem from the introduction of Hindu, demons being absorbed into animist belief. The ninth was another class of witches called Mangagayuma. They made charms for lovers out of herbs, stones, and woods, which could, which would infuse the heart in love. Thus did they deceive the people, although sometimes, through the intervention of the devil, they gained their ends. Today, the Gayuma is known as a Filipino love spell to help the love lives of those with lonely and broken hearts. Tahuhan was a suit layer and predicted the future. This office was general in all of the islands. And the last on the list was Bayugin, one of the earliest historical LGBT references. The Bayugin defined as a man with the nature of a woman. The initial are used in the West to define identity based on gender and sexually but in the philippines one candidate defined lgbt as lesbian gay bakla and tomboy sunat sunat which is equivalent to preacher it was his office to help one to die at which time he predicted the salvation or condemnation 
of the soul. It was not lawful for the functions of this office to be fulfilled by others than people to high standing on account of the esteem in which it was held. Bayugin signified a cut queen, a man whose nature inclined towards that of a woman, whose work was to tempt women into a life of shame. Thank you for watching.